everybody, welcome back to the homestead. Well, we're spending another day in the kitchen today because it is a nasty day outside. We're actually getting an ice storm today, which uh, has pretty much brought everything to a halt. The kids even have the day off of school today, and my guess would be they're probably going to have the day off of school again tomorrow. So today, I thought I would show you one of my favorite recipes. Last week, Sarah showed you her absolute favorite Christmas cookie recipe. So today, I thought I would show you my absolute favorite cookie recipe. Now, sometimes there's one of those recipes that you make every year, and every year, as soon as you taste it, you just know that that's like, it just tastes like the holidays. And this is one of those recipes for me. This is actually my grandma's recipe, and it's something that my grandma always made, and that my mom always made, and then I always make. And it's something that normally I make along with the girls. And uh, we spend the whole day making cookies. They're actually gonna be a cutout cookie that have frosting on top. So we're gonna start with some really basic ingredients and we're gonna get going because these do take a little bit of time, but they're worth it and you'll see at the end. All right, so we're gonna start with just three ingredients. Now, we are using mostly homegrown or homemade ingredients, but if you don't have those, that's fine. You can use whatever you want. Uh, so we're going to start with one cup of butter. Now, this is butter that we made from our cow's milk. So we're going to put that into our mixer. And then we're going to add two eggs. These are fresh eggs from our chickens. And then we're going to use two cups of sugar. I know that sounds like a lot of sugar, and really it is a lot of sugar, but it's the holidays, and that's what makes these taste so good. So we're using raw organic sugar, but you can use regular white sugar if that's what you have. We're just gonna mix that all together, and now we're gonna cream this together with our mixer. So we're gonna use our paddle. And we're just going to put the mixer on low. We're going to get that all mixed together until it's well blended. Now while this is mixing, we're going to add one teaspoon of nutmeg. I've already got it measured out here. We're using organic nutmeg. We're just going to add that into the sugar and eggs and butter. And we're going to just let that mix until that nutmeg is all the way through. I really think the nutmeg is what gives these cookies their unique flavor. It really stands out. That's quite a bit of nutmeg, so. Now the next thing that we need is a half a cup of sour milk. Now you may find in old recipes that a lot of times they will call for sour milk and you may not know what that is. Well, when you drink raw milk like we do, this is raw milk from our cow, Milk doesn't really spoil like pasteurized milk does. It goes sour. So a lot of recipes would want that kind of tanginess of the milk in the recipes. So what they would do is they would actually leave some of this milk out to go sour before they would use it in their baking. Now, most people these days don't drink raw milk and that's fine. There is a way to turn regular milk into sour milk. In fact, I didn't let this milk go sour for the recipe. We're just going to make it into sour milk. The way that you do that is just take the regular milk that you have from the store. And we're going to measure out a half cup. And then we're going to add just a tablespoon of white vinegar to the milk. And that will give it a very similar taste to the sour milk. So we're just going to mix that up. And then to that, we're going to add one teaspoon of baking soda. And then we're going to add that into our mixing bowl with the other ingredients. Okay, so now that we have all of that mixed together, the only other ingredients in these is flour. We're using organic all-purpose flour, but you can use regular all-purpose flour. That's fine too. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to start by adding two cups into here slowly. And then from there on out, you're going to just kind of judge it by how the dough looks. You want this to be a pretty stiff dough because you need to be able to roll it out in order to use the cookie cutters on it. So we're going to get this going. So we're going to get this all mixing together until it starts to become a nice firm dough. So this is cup number five of flour and it's starting to get close. Okay, and I think that that is about right. You can see how firm of a dough that that is. Now that ended up being about five and three quarters cups of flour. But again, you need to do it more by how it looks than an actual amount. So um, I've learned that even different brands of flour, like even if you use all purpose flour, but different brands, every brand will be a little bit different. So, so now that we have this all mixed together, what we're actually going to do is we're gonna put this into the refrigerator for a couple hours to let it get nice and firm. It'll get even more firm in there and that'll make it even easier to be able to roll out for our Christmas cookies. So I'm gonna put this into another bowl, put it in the fridge, and I'll be back with you guys in a couple hours. Well, it's been about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit more since we put the dough in the refrigerator and I'm getting impatient, so it's time to start rolling it out. And you can see that it is quite a bit firmer now than when we made it, which is exactly what you want. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take off a little piece of this and put the rest back in the fridge so that it doesn't get too warm sitting out. So you only want to take out what you're going to roll out at a time, which is, I don't know, maybe a baseball size piece at a time. And that's what we're going to roll out to make our first batch of cookies. So we're going to put a little bit of flour on the counter. And then we're going to take our dough and kind of flatten it out as much as we can by hand. And then we'll start using our rolling pin to roll it out. Now, everybody I think has a different thickness of cookie that they really like. And you can make these as thick or as thin as you want. I prefer to make them very thin. That's just the way that I grew up eating them. And that's the way I like them. So we're gonna roll this dough out just as thin as we can. All right, we're gonna keep rolling these out. I think I had a little too much flour on the counter, so I got rid of some of it. We're just gonna keep rolling until it's whatever thickness you think you want. And I think that's pretty good for what I want. So now that they're rolled out, it's time to start using our cookie cutters to just cut out the shapes that we want. Now in our house, we really only ever make the same four shapes every single year. Christmas tree, bell, snowman, gingerbread man. That's it, that's all we have, that's all we need. They all taste the same anyway. So we're gonna just start pressing out. It's always good to kind of challenge yourself to see how many you can fit on one piece of dough. All right, let's see, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14 on that one. That's pretty darn good. All right, so we're just gonna start pulling away our excess dough. And you can tell already that this re recipe makes a lot of cookies. Now you can freeze this dough as well if you don't wanna use it all right away or put it in the fridge if you don't have time to do you know, all of them in one day. But the fact that this makes a lot of cookies is perfect because this time of year it's perfect to share cookies with neighbors and people at church and co-workers so 
this is a good recipe for sharing. All right, so we're gonna preheat our oven to 350. We're gonna bring our cookie sheet over. Now I'm just using parchment paper on here so that they don't stick. And then we're just going to put the cookies on the pan. All right, that pan's full. We're gonna do one more pan. All right, so this pan made 13. So what we're gonna do is just put the rest of this dough back in the fridge, and then we're gonna get ready to bake these. Again, we have the oven set at 350 degrees. We're gonna put both pans in, and initially we're gonna leave them in for five minutes. All right, our timer just went off for five minutes. So we're going to take a look at them and they're definitely not done, but we're going to switch them around. Now what you're looking for is them to be getting just a little bit brown around the edges and that's when you'll know that they're done. So I think we're going to give them another four minutes. I might check on them at the two minute mark, but I'm pretty sure it's going to take more than that. So we'll just keep an eye on them until they look like they're perfectly brown. Okay, I just peeked at them and it looks like one pan is done and one pan could use just a little bit more time. So that's perfect. We'll take these out. And you can see just a little bit brown around the edges. That's perfect. So we're going to take these and put them on our cooling rack. Alright, and the second pan is done as well. I guess I didn't roll these quite out quite as thin, they're a little bit thicker, so that's why they took a couple extra minutes. While our cookies are over here cooling on the cooling racks, we're gonna get started making the icing. Now, in our family, we don't really like frosting on our cookies. We don't like real thick frosting. We like them to maybe be made with icing, which is, you know, a lot thinner and not quite as sweet, but it still makes them so good. So the last few years, we've just made them with just plain white icing because we don't really like to eat all the chemicals that are in the normal food colorings. But this year I found an all natural food coloring on Amazon and we're gonna give it a try today. The kids are excited because we finally get to have colored Christmas cookies again. This is made by Watkins, and it's no artificial dyes, uh, made with 100% uh, natural vegetable juices and spices. So we're excited to give it a try. Even though we're not doing many cookies right now, I'm gonna try all four colors just to see how they work. We'll leave a link to this in our Amazon shop. So the icing recipe that I like to use is just very, very simple. We're gonna start with a cup of powdered sugar. Now I'm using organic powdered sugar that we order from Azure Standard. Uh, this is where we buy all of our bulk items. And organic powdered sugar is actually pretty hard to find, so we're excited to find this. Uh, we'll leave a link to Azure Standard as well if you guys wanna check them out. It's a great way to save on organic foods. So we're gonna start with the cup of powdered sugar. To that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon or maybe just a tiny bit more of our homemade vanilla. Yeah, a little bit more. 
and then we're going to add just enough milk to make it the consistency that we want. Probably a tablespoon, maybe a little more. And then we're just going to whisk it all together. Alright, now I'm going to do my best to try to divide this into four little bowls here. And then we'll test out the food coloring. Like I said, we've never used this food coloring before, so I have no idea if it's going to be as colorful as, you know, the chemical food coloring or, or what it's going to look like. But I'm excited to have something. Seems more Christmassy to have some color. Alright, I think I'm going to start with just three drops in each little bowl and see what that does. Alright, let's stir these up and see how much color that adds. Hey, that's actually pretty bright. That's brighter than I would have thought. Let's try the green. Green looks kind of weird in the bowl, but I'm sure it'll mix up fine. Yeah, the green looks kind of yellow. Guess we're having yellow Christmas trees. I wonder if I should have shaken that. I wonder if there was something that maybe settles. I'm a guy, so I didn't read the box. Maybe it says to shake them up. Let's try that. Well, it's not separating like that, so maybe that was the key. Oh, it's definitely more green. I mean, I kind of wrecked it now because I already had the yellow in there, but... I think it would have been it would have been fine if I would have shaken it in the first place, so lesson learned. Well, we'll see if I made the same mistake on any of the other colors because I didn't shake those either. So, let's see, this was blue. Ooh, I think that looks good. And this is red. Nice. Look at that. That's exciting. I think that is good. Uh, they're definitely not as bright probably as, you know, like the standard food colorings, but it's nice to have some color for sure. I'm going to add a little bit more to the blue one. So really, I'd say I'm very happy with this food coloring. I did just look at the box and it does say shake well before use, so learn from that. Alright, we're going to put these away. And you know, even though these colors aren't quite as bright and vibrant as the regular stuff from the store, uh, I think it's worth the trade-off for your health. So, you know, I mean, we are making sugar cookies, but at least this part is going to be a little bit healthier because we're using this food coloring. All right, now that we're done making the frosting, the cookies are actually completely cooled off, so we're gonna get busy frosting the cookies. Now, I don't do anything fancy, and I don't go overboard decorating them. I just like to put a little bit of frosting on each cookie and use a spoon to spread it around. That's it, and then you just leave them sit again, and that that icing will harden up as the milk dries out of it and it'll be perfect. So I'm gonna do all of these and then we'll get the girls out here for a taste test. Well, I've got the girls here to try the cookies and see how they like them. See if they taste the way that they always do. Mm-hmm, yeah. Now the frosting isn't quite dry yet, but. It's good, mm -hmm. yeah. Now, I'm not gonna make them pick <laughs> whose are better, mine or Sarah's, because that wouldn't be fair to Sarah. So, we'll just say it's a tie. I think this is a great, great thing to make, to give out to neighbors. I hope you guys give this recipe a try. So if you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget to share this video and all of our videos on all of your social media. That's the absolute best way that you can help our channel. And until next time, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and Merry Christmas.